this is Bodie, and uh, this is my vlog post for week eight. I know it's a couple of weeks late, but I've had connection problems, and this is the earliest I've been able to do it, so apologies for that. I'm going to jump straight into it and address the question that I chose, which was the implications of audio and video, video blocking in organizations, and uh, what it means for content creators and maybe a couple of solutions for it. Um, first off, I think businesses are within their right to block certain sorts of content. Uh, there's always going to be users that uh, misappropriate content, uh, certain sorts of media. It's nice to think that everyone will get on YouTube and watch videos on how to use computer programs more effectively. Sadly, some of us are just going to want to watch cat videos. Um, now, I've got a, a list here of blacklisted programs and apps uh, from May this year that was held, that was done by a company, it was a survey done by a company in Australia. I'll post it in the blog down below. And these were the top programs and apps that were blacklisted by companies. Angry Birds, Dropbox, Facebook, YouTube, Google Play, and Skype. Uh, there's a fair bit of multimedia in there, as we can see. However, what was the uh, main whitelisted program? Do we know? Yes, Skype, audio program. So I think that, to me, proves that organizations aren't really against uh, audio and video streaming per se they just uh, it's more of a, a content thing they have to be mindful of that lowest common denominator like I say basically what the the implication is is their effectiveness is stymied for me um, they're not if they're not using streaming media, there's a very good chance, given its popularity today, that we're going that they're not going to be on the cutting edge. And I think this could, uh, yeah, it, it affects their standing in the marketplace. So if someone else is going to be into streaming media. They're going to be utilizing it themselves, and people are going to get left behind. So in all, basically, in order to keep up, we we need to at least find a workaround, which leads me into solutions. It should also be stated that at the same time as their effectiveness is stymied, I uh, don't think that uh, we need to, I don't think anyone's business model hinges on whether or not YouTube's on their blacklist. I don't think it's quite at that level yet. Uh, so anyway, solutions. Two solutions I came up with. Translation is what I'm terming it. Basically, we're, uh, we're looking at build, using older technology. Maybe uh, I've got a list here. I mean, there's a couple, couple of options there going right down to VHS and Betamax. They're the way of the future. And, uh, you know, we, I mean... The, you can translate audio into text, you can translate video into text, um, and these might be able to be shunted off by request, perhaps even, to different organisations. Basically, what, what solid state media and text would do is allow organisations to sort of scrutinise their data stream a bit more rather than just like I say, having the smorgasbord of data that is streaming media. Um, it's putting a bit of control back in the organization's hand. Um, the second solution is what I'm terming networking. Uh, basically, in the, the, uh, the environment that we're in now, uh, users seek content out. It's, it's accessible, whether from their home computers or some other means. They don't have to look at it at, at work. Um, but users are going to find good content if it's out there. If the good content happens to be in a format that's blocked by their, their organization that they work for, users are going to 
can let their, their management know, management can then uh, decide whether or not to provide access on a case-by-case -case basis. They might even uh, get in touch with the creator, maybe get a, an agreement from the creator not to use any offensive language or anything like that. I, th I think that the, the networking, the connection between consumers, creators and organisations uh, is strong enough and prolific enough now that workarounds can be found through that those networks. Um, I don't think that creators have to do very much on that score. It's not up to them to go chasing after organisations and, and letting them know that they've got a really good vlog or a really good podcast. Um, that the organisation needs. I think that uh, if the creator creates good enough content, users will find that anyway, and you know we'll go from there. Anyway, I've hit six minutes. That was about everything I wanted to say. Uh, first edit of this was 15 minutes, so that was pretty much the skinny version. Sorry for the lateness, sorry for the terrible quality. Uh, thanks for listening, and I will probably post up another one of these next week. Thanks for listening. Bye.